and some pre-calculus techniques, um, starting to get you introduced into calculus, but there's some shortcuts once you get to calculus to do this much quicker. So we're kind of doing it the, the longer version uh, way in this video. So the first thing we're gonna just kind of go over are these formulas, the summation formulas that we're gonna use in uh, the problem that we're gonna do here together. So what this shows you is that the sum of a constant will be the constant times n, meaning like how many of those you have. So if you're adding up, let's say two, uh, 10 times, like it's just gonna be two times 10, which is 20. And then here, this is the sum of consecutive integers. So you would take however many uh, integers you had, let's say one through 10, you have 10 integers, it would be 10 times 11 divided by two. So if you added all those numbers up, and then the sum of squares and the sum of cubes. So we're gonna be using these summation formulas. But the next thing we're gonna take a look at is this area formula over here on the right. So in order to find the area, what we're gonna do is we're gonna subdivide a region into rectangles, okay? And by finding the area of each one of those rectangles and then summing them, okay, adding them all up, we can find the area of a region, okay? Now what's interesting is, is that the smaller, the thinner that the rectangles are, the more accurate the area estimation becomes until you take the limit to infinity, meaning that the rectangles are infinitely thin, you're gonna get the exact area underneath the curve, okay? So I am just have a little sample over here. Sometimes this is called the right rectangular approximation method or the RRAM. Okay, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the area underneath this curve right here between A and B. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna figure out, well, how many rectangles do we wanna to use to divide up this region? Well, if we take this distance, which is B minus A, okay, and let's just say, so B minus A, let's say we wanna divide it up into like just two rectangles, so like this, okay? So then you can see the width of each rectangle would be B minus A divided by two, right? But if we wanted to divide it up into four rectangles, See if we can divide this here better like this. Then you can see that the area is gonna be a little bit more accurate because you're not gonna have as much of a, you know, underestimation or overestimation. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this width, B minus A, and you're gonna divide it by N. N is the number of rectangles that you're using. So that's gonna give you the width of each of these uh, individual rectangles. So we're just finding from here to here. Okay, so that's the width, B minus A divided by N. Now what this represents here is the height of each rectangle. So when you find the area of a rectangle, it's the width of the rectangle times the height, right? Or the base times the height. We're gonna just say width times height. So we're gonna start over here at A. So this is A right, right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the right, B minus A over N. So that's one width, okay? We're gonna go one width to the right, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that X value, okay, and we're gonna put it into our function, okay, this is our function right here, and you're gonna get the output, which is the Y value, which is the height of the rectangle. But you can see what we're doing is we're actually finding the height here on the right side of the rectangle, not the left side. Okay, so that's just an important distinction. And that distinction doesn't really matter as much as you go towards infinity, because the rectangles are gonna become infinitely small, you're gonna get the exact area you know, whether you use the right rectangular approximation method or the left one or the middle one, okay? But for this uh, example, we're just gonna use the right one. And then you can see this little uh, variable here, i, okay? It's like an index. So basically, you know, as you go i equals one, you're gonna find the height of this rectangle here. When you go i equals two, you're gonna find the height of this rectangle here. i equals three, and then i equals four if you have four rectangles. So the key thing is that you're starting at the left okay, side of the area that you wanna find, and you just keep adding one width, then that you find the height at that point. Then you add another width, you find the height at that point. Okay, so you're with me so far. So let's go ahead and do this in an example, and, and you'll see how this works. So say, for example, we wanna find the area underneath this curve, y equals x squared plus one, from zero to two, so from zero to two. So I've shaded it in right there. We wanna find that area. Now, it's not so easy to find this area because of this curved portion. It's not like it's a, trapezoid or you know a triangle or rectangle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this um, way of dividing up the region into rectangles and we're gonna find the limit as n approaches infinity, meaning these rectangles are getting thinner and thinner to find the exact area. Okay, so you're with me so far? Okay, so let's do that. So we're gonna use this formula right over here. So first things first, we have B minus A, okay, which is two minus 
zero. Okay, a is over here zero, and b is uh, over here two. So two minus zero divided by n, so that's two divided by n. Okay, so that's this over here, that's the width of each rectangle. Okay, so let's write that down, two over n. Okay, then we've got f of a, okay, which in this case a is zero, plus b minus a divided by n, so that's two minus zero, which is two divided by n, times i, okay, and there you go. So this is gonna represent the x coordinate. When we put it into the function, that's gonna give us the y coordinate or the height of our rectangle. Then we're gonna multiply it by the width of our rectangle. So just for example like this, if we do two rectangles. So this would be the width here, and then this would be the height, okay? So now all we have to do is we just have to substitute this in. So let's see what we can do here. So i equals one to n. So we're gonna put two divided by n i, this is our input. We're gonna put that in for x on the right. So that's two i over n squared plus one times two over n. Okay, and we're gonna find the sum from i equals one to n. Okay, if we simplify this, what do we get? We get four i squared divided by n squared plus one times two divided by n. Okay, and then if we distribute, what do we get? We get eight i squared divided by n cubed plus two over n, okay? Still summing those up. Now what you can do at this point is you can actually split these up into two summations. So let's do that here. We're gonna substitute this, uh, split this up into eight i squared over n cubed plus the sum of two divided by n. So you can split this up into two summations. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this part here in front of the summation. This is a constant. N is just a, the number of rectangles that we're using. Same thing over here. I'm gonna bring this one over n in front. Okay, since that's just a constant. So we have eight over n cubed times the sum of i squared plus one over n times uh, two. Okay, so now if we go to our summation formulas, the sum of consecutive squares is this right here. So I'm gonna substitute that in. Let's, let's uh, go down here. So we've got eight over n cubed. I squared is gonna give us what? It's n times n plus one times two n plus one all divided by six plus one over n times, okay, now the sum of a constant, okay, n times is just the constant times n. So in this case, this is just gonna be times two n, and you can see the n's are gonna cancel, so we just get two for that. Let's go ahead and do some simplification here. If we foil this out, we get two n squared times n, which gives you two n cubed, we get two n plus one n is three n, times n is three n squared. One times one is one, times n is n, okay? All divided by six. Now the six and the eight I'm gonna reduce, so this is gonna be three and this is four. So we have four uh, over three n cubed plus two. All right, so you with me so far? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna distribute the four and we're gonna split these up into like individual fractions, okay? So this is gonna be eight n cubed divided by three n cubed. So the n cubes are gonna cancel and we get eight thirds, okay? Over here we get 12 n squared divided by three n cubed. That's gonna give you four over n. And then if we distribute the four here, we get four n over three n cubed, which is gonna give us what? Four over three n squared okay, plus two. Now the two and the eight thirds we can combine, that's gonna be 14 thirds plus four over n plus four over three n squared. Okay, now basically it depends on what n is, right? So if you have uh, 10 rectangles, then you're gonna, n is gonna be 10. If you have 100 rectangles, n is gonna be 100. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity. So meaning as these rectangles uh, get thinner and thinner and there's more and more of them. So you can see like, okay, kind of visualize this here. More and more of these rectangles. You can see right now, I'm, it's a little bit of an over approximation, say like that. But as n goes to infinity, these are, rectangles are gonna get thinner and thinner. And what happens is this is gonna go to zero and this term is gonna go to zero because you're dividing by n squared. As this gets larger and larger, that's gonna go to zero. So we're really just left with 
14 thirds. So this is the exact area underneath this parabola between zero and two. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned some uh, tips and some techniques. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and uh, I'll see you in the next video. I'll talk to you soon.